the SAS video tutorial on thinking about queries in Proc SQL. Now I'm going to pick up where we left off on some previous videos. So you might want to go back and look at them because what I'm trying to get you to do is rethink some of the things we were looking at. Okay. So I've left a query up here that we used in the joining part two, joining of tables part two. So here's what I want to look at. I'm interested in delays. Okay. And here I did the simple thing, which is sort of naive and direct It's to select the month that I was interested in the destination and select the mean departure delay and a mean arrival delay. And I'm going to take this from all the flights from 2008 here where the origin is Richmond, which is where Virginia Commonwealth University is. And then we're going to group it by month and destination. Now, this seems to be the right thing to do, but if I actually look at this data, so I'm going to open up these tables, which I've created before. Notice that there's some uh, interesting things here. Uh, number one, some of these are negative. Okay. Um, and then some, if it's a departure delay and you leave early, nobody cares. Everybody's happy. Actually, everybody was on the plane on time and they got to leave early, which means they probably arrived early. Uh, and then we have some of these that have mean arrival delays, which are negative as well. So we don't care about those, right? I mean, if you arrived on time, why do you care? Right? I mean, I wouldn't care. I arrived early. That's even better. That means I have to spend less time next to the crying kid. So anyway, you get the point that this query here in and of itself doesn't really give me what I'm interested in. I'm interested in negative effects, right? I'm interested in sitting on the plane way too long or sitting and waiting and missing my next flight or whatever. Okay. So we need to rethink our query here to make sure it matches up with what we're interested in. So here's flight 2008 data. I just opening it back up and notice if I just come along here, there's lots of these that are arrival delays and they are uh, negative. And then I have a whole bunch of departure delays, which are negative. I mean, this is not an uncommon event just by looking, just opening up the data set and you can see it. Okay. So here's what we're going to do is we need to rethink how we do this. So I want the month, I want the destination, I want the mean departure delay, and I want the mean arrival delay. And it seems like it would be just as simple as putting in like an and in here, maybe and say where a uh, departure delay is positive and uh, arrival delay is positive. Is, would that work? And you probably will realize that that actually doesn't work. And let me tell you why. So here you're saying departure delay is positive and arrival delay is positive. Uh, let's just look at it and see what happens. Um, uh, because we want to compare it to our previous one. So I'm going to rename the table that it's going to go to. So I'm going to put a little A on the end of this because I want to be able to open up my other table. So I'm going to run this real quick. And what you'll notice is, is that it requires that you to both have a departure delay and an arrival delay that's, that's positive, which may not be true. The flight might have arrived early. The plane might have arrived early for the next flight. But for some reason, they have a hard time getting everybody on there. Um, so that's an and. And so here, notice they're all positive. Uh, I'm going to just quickly uh, look at these, try to look at these side by side. So here was my new one. Here is my old one. And you can see that the numbers are uh, quite different here. Okay, so... Notice here, my depart mean departure delay is 52 minutes uh, for month one of 2008 versus uh, a negative 0 0.63 because usually it's not too bad, but obviously it's had a few that are pretty bad. Um, but this is requiring them to be in a situation where there was both a departure delay and an arrival delay. And that's the problem. It's requiring both of them. So we need to think about how to get this to work in an or situation. And it's not as easy as you would think. So what we're going to do is we're going to run two separate queries and then we're going to join them together and then we'll put the, we'll roll them up and hopefully that will grab everything that we want to grab. Okay. So just keep that in mind. We want to grab uh, everything we possibly can grab on this, but it might actually cause some problems uh, with things matching up. 
But first, I just want you to realize that we've done something that's inconsistent, right? Uh, we've we've let uh, arrival delays and the, which are not a problem, and departure delays that are negative, which are not a problem when they're negative, is not a problem. So let's break this up into have uh, arrival and uh, I'm going to call it. So A is going to be for arrival. D is going to be for departure. Here I'm going to just take out uh, the whole departure delay out of this one. I'm purposely going to do this. And then uh, I can take departure delay out of here as well because I don't need it in there. Uh, and then this one is D, so I'm going to take out the arrival delays, which means I need to be careful and take out this comma. And then I take out everything that has to do with arrival delays here. So I'm going to chuck this. All right, now this will create in two new tables, and we can look at those as well. So let's give this a run. Notice it takes longer because it's running two of them. And it wasn't so fast the first time around either. Uh, but it should be a little bit quicker because it doesn't have to match up with two criteria and just one. So here I have them both done now. So I have arrival and I have departure. So here's one of them. Here's the other one. We can put them next to each other if you want to see them. So mean departure delay, mean arrival delays. Uh, and notice here, I think everything looks, well, nope. You quickly see something here. Notice that MCO is over here in an arrival delay, but it's not in this list here of departure delays. You also see this with MEM. MEM is not over here in this column. So this is going to cause some interesting problems that we're going to have to work out. Now, if you notice here that month one here stops at row 16, month one here stops at row 18. So we found two of them that uh, go a little bit farther. But anyway, uh, we're going to keep going on this. Okay, so I've got these two together and I've rolled them up. Now the question is, is do I join them together into one table? And I would say yes or no, depending on your needs. But I want you to think about how you go about in doing this. Uh, and that's what this whole video is about, is when you look at data, Sometimes doing what's the naive thing is not really what is practically needed. And that's something that you'll learn when you get on a job is that, hey, nobody cares about arrival, uh, you know, people arriving early, negative arrival delays. That, that means they got here early. Nobody's going to complain. Uh, but people do complain if they sit there too long or they miss a flight because that's a big issue and it causes problems. Uh, people don't like to wait around if you haven't noticed. All right, so this has been rethinking or thinking again about queries in SQL, and now you can move on to the next video.